Welcome to Bakersfield College and the Department of Industrial Automation. I'm doing a lecture today on project setup in Control Logics. In this lecture, I'm going to cover project organization, the relationship between tasks, programs, and routines, uh, types of tasks that we use, and I'm going to discuss creating base tags and alias tags. Control logics, when we open a new project, it's called a project. And inside the project, we have several tiers of hierarchy. So we have, in the project, we can have one or more tasks. In each task, we have one or more programs. And inside the programs, we have routines. And each of these serves a little bit different purpose in Studio 5000. We can have three types of tasks. We can have continuous, periodic, and event-based. Continuous tasks run all the time. They're always running, and they're the lowest priority task. The continuous task can be interrupted by a periodic task, and that would be something like you want to take a temperature reading every, say, every 10 minutes, you want to take a temperature reading on your parts. So a, a periodic task will interrupt the continuous task, do its work, and then the continuous task will continue. The third kind is an event-based task. And that's if something unusual happens, such as if you have a bottling line and you have a vision sensor that looks for a missing bottle cap. If it sees a missing bottle cap, it will do some routine that you've set up. So here they are shown graphically. We've got the main continuous task. It's always running and it has the lowest priority. It can be interrupted by task two as a periodic task, so it happens on a regular basis. It interrupts a continuous task, does its thing, and then the continuous task goes on. We can also have event tasks. And the event tasks and the continuous tasks can have different priorities. So you can have your event task be your greatest priority, or it can be your periodic task. So three kinds of tasks. When we start programming, we're only going to use the continuous task. Even though these different types of tasks exist, when we start into programming, we're not going to really bother with uh, the three kinds. We're just going to use the main continuous task. The next hierarchy level are programs. And each task can have one or more programs. You have to have at least one program in a task. And then the programs can have one or more routines. So I'm going to talk about the routines first. The routine is where you put your logic, whether you're doing ladder logic or structured text or some other language. Here's a project example. So we have our, our main project that contains all of our programming. Inside this main project, we've got our continuous task and it has one program and that program has two routines. It has a periodic task and it has an event-based task. So that, that's one way that a project can be set up. I'm going to switch now and talk about tags a little bit. Control logics, and we use CLX for an abbreviation. Control logics is the PLC, by the way, and Studio 5000 is the software that we use to program it. Control logics does not use traditional addressing. The inputs and outputs have addresses, but we don't use those when we're writing our logic. Instead, we use tags. And it's a simpler way to set up our programs. There's four kinds of tags that are available in control logics. We're going to focus on base tags and alias tags. The other two kinds, the produced and the consumed, we're not going to use. That's a kind of a more advanced uh, use of the PLC and we're not going to get into that. 
So we're going to focus on the base tags and the alias tags. The other thing we have with tags is we can put them in different locations. So you can see in this hierarchy, we have our controller tags here. The tags that you put in your controller tags can be used for any program that you have in your project. We can also put tags inside each program and those tags are only available to that program. So if we have two different programs set up, let me go back to this example. If we put tags in this program, then those tags will not be available to any of these other programs. So for example, we could have a, a motor running input in this program and over here we could also have a motor running but they could be for different motors. If we put our tags up in the controller based tags then those tags are available to every. Here's a couple of examples of some tags. So here instead of using the address for this tag we use sensor 1 and that tells us where that input comes from. Here we have an address local 20 data 5 but instead of using that, which is uh, not very intuitive, we give it a tag alias of fan motor. And then we know what that output is. We know that when that sensor is, is hot, we're going to send an output to this fan motor. The other kind of tag that we're going to work with quite a bit are timer tags. And in this example of a timer tag, we've got different attributes that we can use. So here's the pre, which is a preset. And timers always are in thousandths of a second. So this says 30,000, and that's a 30 second timer. So that's our preset, how long the timer goes for. ACC is the timer accumulation. Enable, timer timing. DN is the timer done bit. So when the timer finishes, this done bit will go hot, and it'll say that this timer is finished and you can use that information somewhere else in your program. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to end this video and I'm going to start a new video where I use Studio 5000 to demonstrate the different tags. It's a lot easier to see when I'm actually using Studio 5000 rather than using the PowerPoint slides. So tune in to the next video and have a look at addressing. Thank you.